Hi there, my name is Brenda Cadman and I'm a Canva certified creative from Prince Edward Island, Canada. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how small business owners can most effectively use Canva's pro feature, the brand kit, in order to create more professional looking graphics for their business. So let's jump over to Canva. Ultimately, becoming successful at using Canva within your business means that you are no longer creating random graphics that just look pretty, but instead you begin to use Canva in a brand consistent way. And in order to ensure that all of your graphics and your marketing materials look consistently branded and cohesive, you need to be using Canva's brand kit. Now the brand kit is a Canva Pro feature, but I think once you've finished watching this tutorial, you'll see just how valuable it is. Canva has described a brand kit as a short, easily digestible guide to your brand's visual identity. So whereas your brand guidelines are a set of standards that explain how your brand should be communicated, your brand kit is one part of your brand guidelines and it speaks more specifically to the visual elements of your brand. It assigns a visual identity to your business, which makes it more easily recognizable. And the reason that's important is because a brand must be recognizable in order to develop loyalty and build trust. Essentially, a brand kit is a foundational step towards building that loyalty and trust such that people come to trust you enough to want to do business with you. The brand kit feature in Canva incorporates three aspects of your visual branding, your logo, your brand colors, and your brand fonts. So let's take a closer look at those components in the brand kit. Let's start by looking at the variations of logos that you're going to need. You're going to need more than perhaps the single logo you have in mind. And in fact, there are probably four logo variations that I'd recommend you consider uploading into your Canva brand kit. You'll need your main color logo. So for example, you can see my standard logo here for Bonacord Creative. However, you'll see that this will only work on a white or light colored background. And as soon as I put it on a dark background, it won't work. There isn't enough contrast and it's not going to look professional. So if you plan to use your logo in Canva designs that have a darker image in the background, one that requires more contrast or some sort of dark background color that your logo can't clearly be seen against, you will need to have a reverse logo. You can see I've got that here now with a version of my logo that leaves the icon intact because that still fully stands out against the darker background, but the text in this logo is all white, so it's clearly readable. The third variation that you're going to want to upload for your logo is if you have an icon associated with your logo. If you do have an illustrative element, some sort of icon that's part of the logo, I do suggest uploading just the icon portion as well. For example, I don't usually like to use my full logo on my social graphics, but for those, I will just use the B icon portion. And finally, if you have any additional variations of your logo, you'll want to upload those as well. For example, if your main logo is horizontally oriented, you may also have a variation that is stacked on top of each other so that it's more square in its dimensions. Now that you've got your logo variations ready to go, it's time to upload them to Canva, and I do recommend uploading all of them so you have them at your fingertips. In terms of the format for your logos, you can upload them as JPEGs, PNGs, or SVG files, but note that it will be very important that your logos have a transparent background so that they blend more seamlessly into your graphics. If I just uploaded a logo as a JPEG on a white background, you're gonna get that white box behind it and that feels far less polished and it will look less professional for your business. As a reminder, you can only upload your brand logo into the brand kit if you are on Canva Pro. So what you'll want to do is simply click on the plus sign here, browse your computer to locate the logo you want to upload, and then proceed with the upload. You can see that I've uploaded a variety of my own logos here, and you can see that they all have transparent backgrounds, and you'll know that by this grid pattern here. And then if you want to access your logos while you're working within Canva's design editor, you will simply go to the folders area, and then look for the logos folder, and you'll see all of them there. 
Moving on, you'll also want to set up your brand's color palette in Canva's brand kit, and then it's gonna be really important moving forward that you stick to just using your brand colors. I know that some of you may feel that this is stifling your creativity, but in reality, it reduces confusion and overwhelm, not just for you, but also for your audience. If you stick to your brand color palette, it's going to create a sense of cohesiveness across all of your business marketing and graphics. It'll feel less visually cluttered and it will result in much less brand confusion for those who follow you. So the first thing to do is to compile a list of the color hex codes for your brand colors. A color hex code will look something like this. It starts with the pound or the hashtag sign and it's followed by a six character alphanumeric code. This is what you're going to want to input when you add your colors into Canva so that you can ensure you are using exactly the same color values as your other marketing materials. You want consistency with your colors here. And that's going to be so that you can create a sense of cohesiveness across all of your graphics and marketing materials. Because slight deviations in your colors is going to make things feel inconsistent and visually cluttered. If you worked with a branding specialist or a graphic designer to create your brand's color palette, they likely provided you a brand spec sheet with your hex values. If they didn't, see if you can get that list from them. If you're using Canva Pro, you aren't going to have any limit to the number of colors you can add into your color palette area here, whereas you will be limited to just adding three colors if you are on Canva's free plan. Additionally, on a pro account, you can also create multiple color palettes. So if you wanted to add a color palette, you would simply click on add new palette and it's going to add a new palette for you. You can rename it, so let's call it test. And then you're going to add your colors by clicking on the plus sign. Now I'm just gonna choose some random colors for the purposes of this example, but you'll actually input your specific color hex code values here in order to set your precise brand colors. If you need to remove any of the colors, just hover over the color you want to delete and click on the X button. Now one thing to note is that you can't reorder your colors later, so try to add them in the order that you want to have them appear in the palette. If you want to remove an entire palette, you'll just click on the three dots here and then select Delete Palette and it'll ask you to confirm. And then once you have your color palette set up, when you open a design, you will see that you can easily access your brand's colors directly here from the color selection tool. And if you have multiple color palettes, they'll all show up here as well. Next up is your brand fonts. You should be using a consistent set of fonts, not only in your Canva designs, but also on your website and any other marketing materials that you use. Now, I usually advise that you should not have more than three fonts in your designs, and that's separate from your logo. If you're using more than three fonts currently, it's probably creating unnecessary visual clutter. Additionally, your brand fonts should also have a visual hierarchy set up for them. So for example, you should have one font treatment for your headings, another for your subheadings, another for your body copy, and so on. And you can see that Canva has broken down the font area in the brand kit to enable you to choose a font and formatting for headings, subheadings, and body copy. Note that this doesn't mean you're necessarily choosing a completely different font for each of those items, but it does mean that you need to choose a particular font and formatting for each of them and then use them consistently. Once you've established your fonts and font hierarchy, you can add that into your Canva brand kit here if you have a Canva Pro account. You won't be able to set your fonts in this area if you're on the free plan. Additionally, you won't be able to upload fonts if you're on a free plan, and that becomes a big problem for brand consistency if your brand fonts aren't included in the free fonts that Canva provides. And the ability to upload custom fonts and to set the brand fonts here in the brand kit is probably one of the biggest reasons that small business owners tell me they decide to upgrade to a pro subscription. So if there is a font that you use as part of your brand fonts that is not in Canva's provided font options, you have the ability to upload fonts in this area here. So if you wanted to upload your font, you would simply click on this option here, browse to the font on your computer that you want to upload, choose to upload it, and then you'll be able to use that in all of your Canva designs so that you have that brand consistency that is going to make your graphics look more polished and refined. Now, I actually believe that a solid brand kit will also include consistent guidelines for your brand imagery. 
That may include your own headshots and brand photography, your stock photo choices, as well as any icons and illustrations, patterns, textures, or any other style elements that you utilize as part of your visual branding. You want to make sure you get a copy of all of those and upload them to your Canva account for easy access. And I recommend you do that using custom folders to organize your visual brand assets. Then when you have all of your brand images at your fingertips while you're working on designs in the future, it will help reduce any sense of frustration because you won't be constantly having to search for and upload new images all the time. So let's put it all together. By using my brand kit components, I can take one of Canva's templates and I can customize the images, the colors, and the fonts so that it quickly matches my own unique business branding. Once you have your brand kit elements in place in your Canva account, whether you're creating designs from scratch or customizing a template in Canva, you'll want to consistently use your brand kit on all of your future social graphics and marketing materials and any of the documents that you're creating. In doing so, it makes using Canva so much easier and more efficient to create new designs for your business because you already have a guide of what to use and what not to use. Plus, you will have a clearly recognizable brand across all of the graphics and documents that you create in Canva. Thanks so much for watching this tutorial, and if you are a small business owner, I hope you learned something new that you can take action on immediately in your business in order to create graphics in Canva that look as polished and professional as possible. And if you would like to connect with me, you can find me in my Facebook community called Online Tech Society Canva and Websites Made Simple, or on Instagram where you'll find me at Brenda Cadman. I sincerely look forward to connecting with you.